Hello everyone, it is time for another Q&A video and clearly Dewey really wanted to join for this one. We've got a total of six questions to get to this time around and in case this is your first Q&A video, they all come from members of a certain tier of the Patreon campaign. If you want to check out the campaign for yourself, I've got a link at the bottom of the screen right now. First up, we've got a question from Steven. I'm going to get to it somehow. Excuse me, Dewey. Steven wants to know, I'm reading this upside down, will you vlog your marathon? I actually have to point out right off the top here that the first three questions this week are about my marathon. And please know, guys, that it really means a lot to me that you keep asking about it. It's consuming so much of my life right now. It's so important to me for so many reasons. So the fact that you guys are so genuinely interested and supportive really means a lot. As for the vlogging thing, I have a feeling the answer is going to be a no on that. I did think about it for a little while, but even just trying to consistently vlog during my training has been a challenge just because the running itself is so difficult that I don't think I'll be able to do it on race day. And also, I just have to stay focused on the running and just keep my mind on the training and just the motivation that I need to actually cross the finish line. So a vlog probably isn't happening, but I can assure you there are going to be a ton of posts on Instagram. My family's going to take pictures. I have a couple of friends who are hopefully going to be there watching as I run the course. So I can assure you lots of social media posts, but probably nothing vlogging the actual experience. But if you're a member of the Patreon team, you are going to get an exclusive post-race video, so keep an eye out for that. Next race question is coming from Evan, who wants to know, what movies are you using to pump yourself up for the marathon? I've got two of them. The first one I'm going to tell you about is the obvious one. It's one of the movies that actually inspired me to sign up for the New York City Marathon, and it's Britney Runs a Marathon. If you haven't seen that movie yet, I highly recommend it. I think whether you're interested in running or, I mean, just have any ambition at all with something in your life, that is just such an inspiring story. And really, I just keep thinking back to the third act of the movie and how much it moved me and the thought of having a similar experience on race day really it just kind of rocks me to my core and it makes me so excited for November 3rd for my other choice I'm actually gonna say Eddie the Eagle starring Hugh Jackman Taron Egerton and directed by Dexter Fletcher that is just such an inspiring sports underdog story and I really didn't expect that movie to move me as much as it did it wound up being one of my favorite movies one of my 10 favorite movies of that particular year and I'll never forget, I saw it at one of the 42nd Street theaters in New York and Manhattan, and I just remember walking out of that theater feeling like I was floating, feeling like I could accomplish anything. And I mean, really, what better feeling to go into my first marathon with than that? All right, third marathon question right now. Luke wants to know, since you're closing in on your marathon, can you give us an update on your fundraising campaign and how people can help out? Luke, I am so happy you asked this question because if I'm being completely honest, the fundraising has taken a back seat ever since the training mileage has gotten to a really high point. When I first launched the fundraising campaign, I don't even think I had properly started my marathon training. And even when the proper schedule did kick in, the mileage was so low that I was able to work during the week, do my runs and my long runs over the weekend, but still devote a good deal of time to the fundraising effort. But Ever since the miles have gotten sky high, it's just the idea of running something like, I don't know, 13 plus miles over the weekend in a single day, figuring out how I'm changing my diet, making sure I'm stretching enough, doing all of these things, that has just kind of taken up most of my brain space. And sadly, the fundraising hasn't been a top priority recently, but it should be because I'm only 41% of the way there. So how you could help at this point, if you can donate. All the proceeds go to the North Shore Animal League, a wonderful organization that I've known about ever since I was young. And clearly I'm a big pet lover, an animal lover, and I have been my entire life. So to be able to combine that with how passionate I am about what North Shore Animal League does with this epic goal of running my first marathon, 
that makes the whole thing 10 times more meaningful than I ever could have imagined. So I really am honored to be running this on their behalf. But if you can, you can donate. If you're not in a place to donate, that's totally cool. You could still share the link to my donation page. You can also go on over to the North Shore Animal League website and they've got so many suggestions for ways that you can support their organization. So maybe you'll find the right fit for you right there. So. That is the status of the fundraising campaign, Luke. Thanks so much for checking in. All right, question number four today is from Billy, who wants to know, what do you do to avoid stress at work? A great question, Billy, because it is well worth reminding myself of all of these things. One of the first things I'll tend to turn to is my music. I love my music, and in particular, I'm very into my running playlist right now. It's got a whole bunch of my favorite songs on it. And also, as many of you well know, I love listening to Alt Nation on Sirius XM. So one, it can help calm me down a little when I'm feeling stressed, but also let's say I need a little extra energy or motivation to get through, I don't know, an upcoming shoot or a new assignment, that will usually do the trick. So music is a big help. And also I turn to my colleagues because I am in a lucky position where I work with a whole bunch of wonderful people who also happen to be my friends. So if I got to calm down for a minute, I turn to them. I take my mind off of it. Or let's say I'm getting stressed because I can't finish an assignment and I need some brainstorming help. I've got so many people to turn to. And similarly, when I get bummed out about something, the first two people I go to are my mom and my sister. And I'm texting them all the time throughout the day and they are always there. They're such a strong support system for me. Another thing I like to remind myself of when I do get stressed is that I think sometimes stress can be good because in my case, I think I'm stressed because I care and I really wouldn't want it any other way. Thanks so much for the question, Billy. It is on to the next one, and it's from Ian, who wants to know, out of the many film festivals you've seen, were there any unplanned films that you ended up seeing and really enjoyed? Yes and no, not unplanned entirely, because the films I'm about to name were all films that I was assigned to see for interviews, but they weren't on my list when it came to my preliminary planning, which basically comes down to me highlighting the top titles, the ones that I can't leave that festival without seeing, because everyone's gonna be talking about them. And then on top of that, I go to familiar filmmakers that I admire and I just wanna see their next project. So that's the preliminary list. Then I get my assignments and new films come on them. New films like Sea Fever, which was one of my favorites of TIFF 2019. It's a creature feature about a fishing boat that goes out to make a big catch. And then while they're out there, a mysterious octopus-like creature attaches itself to the boat and then creepy things happen. Right up my alley, highly recommended if it sounds like your type of thing. And it was a great interview that I got to do too. So that was one that I was unaware of and wound up absolutely loving. Similarly, this movie Hope that I covered at TIFF as well. And this is one that I actually never would have seen had it not been on my interview schedule because it's not really my type of movie. It's about a couple played by Andrea Hovig and Stellan Skarsgård. And at the beginning of the movie, she's told that she has three months to live. And the movie is basically all about how that diagnosis transforms their relationship. And it is so upsetting, but also beautiful and really moving. And Andrea Hovig gives one of the best performances I've seen all year in it. So I am glad I was assigned that one. Moving over to South by Southwest, a really nice surprise for me there was the movie Ms. White Light. I have a review up on the channel if you haven't seen it. I'll include it on the end card of this video so you could check it out easily. But that was a movie I knew nothing about and absolutely fell for it. Another movie that like is super charming and moving, has a great lead performance. Definitely keep that on your radar. I need to look into whether or not that got distribution, but I hope it did because I think a lot of you out there would really enjoy it. And similarly, a movie that I caught at Sundance that I wasn't really ready for was Cher. Cher is phenomenal. And I believe you can get this one on HBO right now, but Cher was one of the best movies that I've seen all year. And I was also really happy that this wound up on my assignment list because it also wound up being one of my favorite interviews that I've done all year too. Just about hearing the story that director Pippa Bianco and star Rian Beretta, their story just with what they went through to actually make this movie happen, it really is something else. I can include a link to that interview in the description section of this video as well. Check that out and watch the movie as well. All right, let's hit our last question now. This one is a big one and it comes from Kavi who wants to know, what are your top five favorite film scores? Before I get into it, as I often say with these ranked lists, 
It's not the best, it's my favorite, and also these can change. I get in different moods all the time, and sometimes I prefer to listen to something else, but these are the five film scores that I catch myself listening to and being most excited to listen to right now, and I'll just get the obvious one out of the way first. It's Jurassic Park. It does not matter if it is like the teeniest tiny stitch of music from that score. The second I hear anything that makes me think Jurassic Park, my ears perk up and I'm just so quickly transported into that film that I love so much. So obviously Jurassic Park is at the top of my list for this. The next one I wanna hit is Halloween. I think that's one of the most iconic film scores of all time. I also think that they evolved that score so beautifully in the 2018 film. and. One of my favorite recent memories is going to see John Carpenter in concert, seeing him play the score from Halloween and so much more. And I've spoken about this before. The video is on my Instagram, but one of the most magical, like truly magical moments of that event was when the score from the original film blended perfectly into the score from the new version. I was, it was chill inducing. All right, the next one on my list here is Nightmare Before Christmas. And this is one of the scores that kind of got me into playing music too, because I had to take piano lessons as a kid, didn't like it. The only thing I truly wanted to learn was the music from Nightmare Before Christmas. And even though I never got good at it on the piano, it did show me that I had an interest in playing music and eventually I found my instrument. It was the saxophone, but still to this day, love this movie, one of my favorite movies of all time. And I know every word of every song and can't get enough of them all. All right. This one's an obvious one. It's Star Wars, but I'm refusing to play by the rules right now. And I'm gonna say just a compilation of all of the most iconic pieces of all of the scores from those movies. And you guys might also know my favorite. Right now on my running playlist, I have March of the Resistance, which was first featured in Force Awakens. Really, really love the energy of that piece. And particularly the piece of film that it's attached to. There's something about those moments that with the visuals and the score move me to tears every time I watch it and also really has a profound effect on me when I listen to it too. The last one I'm gonna hit is one of my favorite recent scores and it's Sing Street. There's another one where I still have a lot of those songs on my running playlist and every single time I listen to them, I get like an extra jolt of energy. And admittedly, I'm still a little pissed that none of those songs got an Academy Award nomination that year, but you know what? I still have the score and I'm still gonna spread the love for all of those songs as much as I possibly can, really. If you have not seen Sing Street by now, check that one out. I gave you a whole bunch of great recommendations. I hope you enjoy all of those. So I'm gonna leave you with those. I'm gonna say thank you again to everybody out there who's supporting me with the marathon training. Really does mean a lot to me and it is having a very, very positive effect on my training. The next long run I have after recording this video is my longest distance yet. It's an 18 mile run, so I'll let you guys know how that one goes. Again, to my six Patreon supporters who sent these questions, Steven, Evan, Luke, Billy, Ian, and Kavi. Thank you guys so much for the thoughtful questions, for the continued support. Please know how much I appreciate all of you. All right, I'm gonna say goodbye, but before I do, one more reminder, the Patreon URL is at the bottom of the screen right now. Check it out, sign up for one of the tiers. It's a lot of fun and a community that I love so much. Huge thanks to everybody out there for watching this video. Do not forget to like and share it, and I'll see you next month for another Q&A video.